Hello, welcome to lesson 20. Uh, this is going to be our last lesson in the second part of optics and our last lesson in the topic of optics in general. So in this lesson we are going to look at the human eye and then the eye defects and their correction. Let's begin by looking at the human eye. Uh, the eye is a, a light sensitive organ for vision in animals. Uh, let's look at how we, uh, it looks like the cross section through it. So we have mainly four parts. There are, of course, a number of parts in the eye, but these are the major parts that we require for vision. Uh, we have the pupil, the iris, the lens, and then the retina. So we're going to look at the function of each of those parts. Let's begin by looking at the function of this lens here. That's the converging lens. So that lens focuses the image of an object onto the retina. And then we also have what you call the iris. And that iris, uh, this, the iris here, controls the amount of light entering the eye by reducing the size of this pupil. And then also we have what you call the pupil. And that pupil is a circular opening through which is a circular opening through which light enters the eye. Then the retina is the light sensitive part where the image is formed. It's the light sensitive part where the image is formed. Let's look at the similarities between the eye and the camera. Uh, as you can see, both have converging lenses and then also both have light sensitive parts. They both have light sensitive parts where the image is formed. And then also both have openings which admit light. And they both have the ability to control the amount of light entering them. They all have that ability. Let's also look at the differences. So here, you need to draw a table. If you want the difference, let's draw a table. Uh, on the side we have the eye, the other side we have the camera. The eye has natural lens with a variable focal length. While the camera has artificial lens with fixed focal length. And then when you talk of variable focal length, it means that the focal length of the lens, the eye lens, can always be changed just by contracting and the relaxation of the ciliary muscles. Of course, the eye has other parts, that are what we call the ciliary muscles. Uh, for those who have covered by, uh, who, have, who do biology, they know that very well, because this topic is also looked at in, in the, this human eye is also looked at in biology. So we have what we call the ciliary muscles, which contracts and relaxes and helps to regulate and it helps to to vary uh, uh, to, to helps in varying the thickness of the lens and as the thickness of the lens varies then the focal length of that lens also varies but for the camera the lens is artificial so it is having always a fixed focal length then the other difference is that the image distance is fixed well, for this, the image distance is variable. Here, yeah, the image distance is variable. Let's also look at what you call accommodation. Accommodation is the ability of the eye to focus an image of an object by altering the focal length of the lens. Let's also define what you call the near point and the far point. When we talk of a near point, is the closest point at which the eye can focus clearly. It is the closest 
point at which the eye can focus clearly. Then the far point is the farthest point at which the eye can focus clearly. Let's make a note. Uh, we need to note that for a human eye, or for a normal human eye, uh, the near point is 25 centimeters and the far point is at infinity. Let's look at the eye defects and their corrections. Uh, eye defects are caused by the inability of accommodation. The inability of accommodation causes these eye defects. We have a number of eye defects. Uh, we're going to look at mainly two eye defects. One, we're going to look at the long-sightedness, or what we call the hypermetropia. Long-sightedness, or uh, a long-sighted person here sees only far objects clearly because their images are focused onto the retina. So they are only able to see near I sorry they are only able to see long sighted are only able to see far objects clearly. And the person with the long sightedness or the person with this long sightedness eye defect uh, cannot see near objects clearly. And this causes uh, this is a uh, this this kind of defect occurs when the image is formed beyond the retina. So you'll find that the image is going to be formed beyond the retina when the object is at a near point, or sorry, is at is near. When it is a near object, then the image is formed beyond the retina. Let us see how it looks like. So if this is a near point, if this is a, an object at a near point, then this person will not be in position to see because the image is going to be forming behind the retina. Then you are saying in this case the lens of the eye becomes a bit thinner and the focal length increases and this causes all the images of nearer objects to fall behind the retina. Let us look at the correction for this defect. So this defect can be corrected using a suitable converging lens, what we call a converging lens meniscus, a converging, sorry, a converging meniscus. So we can correct this using what we call a converging meniscus. Let's see that red diagram. So when we have a near point object, it can clearly be focused onto the retina when we have this converging meniscus. Let's also look at short-sightedness, what we call myopia. Short-sightedness, for a short-sighted person here, uh, this person is able to see only near objects very clearly because their images are always formed onto the retina. But for such a person, uh, you cannot see far objects clearly and this occurs when the image is formed in front of the retina. So the image will be in front of the retina. Let us see this. So rays from far objects are always been going to be forming an image in front of the retina. So a person with short sightedness cannot see far objects. Let us see, uh, continue and say that uh, for this person here, when you look at his the lens, this lens here becomes a bit thicker and the focal length increase, decreases and this causes all the images of far objects to fall onto the retina, to fall in front of the retina. So all images will be falling in front of the retina because the lens is a bit thicker. Now let's see how we can correct this defect. We can correct this defect by using what we call a diverging meniscus.
this is a special type of lens which we can use. You can use a special type of lens called a diverging meniscus. So a diverging meniscus, when it is used, it's going to enable that image to be formed at the retina, as we can see here. So that image can be formed in the retina. And then this person will be able to see, this person will be in position to see this image form far distances. will be able to see because the image will be formed in front just at the retina. So that's how we can correct short-sightedness by using a suitable diverging lens called a diverging meniscus. Let us also look at this example here. A person with a normal eye point, sorry, a person with a normal eye point distance of 25 centimeters, wear spectacles with a diverging lens of focal length 200 centimeters in order to correct the far point distance to infinity. Good. Calculate the near point distance when viewing using the spectacle. So here it means that these light rays will be appearing to be coming from a near point. So this is what we are going to be having. So this is actually where the object is, but when we place this diverging lens or the diverging meniscus, it will be appearing to be coming from here. So the image will be actually the image will be the the focal length of this lens is negative is, is, this is the diverging lens so it will have focal length of negative 200 and then the image distance is going to be this distance and that distance is going to be a distance of 25 centimeters because okay they have said that the person said that a person with a normal near point distance of 25 Wears spectacle. That means that this person is able to see a light, which is at uh, the, the that light must be a position of 25 centimeters. But now, it means that far distances cannot be seen by this man unless he has put on spectacles. So he has to put on these spectacles in order to see. So it means that we are going to consider. Uh, we need to note first of all that the object O will appear to be at this position. So this will be the position, the apparent position of the image. So if this is the, this is going to be the apparent position of this image when I've placed in this converging lens. So it means I can get the distance from here up to here. Now how do we get that distance? That distance is actually where there is a near point. So this distance from here up to here is going to be the near point, which is 25. Because in order for him to see, then this, uh, this spectacle must help that object to be brought to a near point. So it means that this point, which is the image of this lens, is actually going to be uh, 25 from the lens. Now, so it means that the distance from this point up to this point is negative 25 because it is virtual, and then the object distance is supposed to be from here up to here, which is which you are looking for. So considering the action of this lens, we are going to have our this negative 25 centimeters and f is negative 200 centimeters, which implies that if I use the lens formula, our u, that is now the distance which is going to be from here up to here. Because remember, this lens must bring this object to a near point in order for him to see. And that near point is 25. That's why I'm saying distance from here up to here is 25 in order for this person to see that object. So our u is going to be... Uh, negative 28.6 centimeters. So it means that the distance from here up to here is going to be 28.6 centimeters. And that is going to be the near point distance when viewing using the spectacle. Yeah. Thank you for your attention and also, thank you for purchasing this 
package of optics too. Uh, there are other topics that I'll be looking into. So I still welcome your support. Thank you so much.